Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a detailed overview of our 240 volt split phase off-grid solar system. It's right here. Before we take a look at what's inside the solar shed, let me show you out here what's powering all that, our solar panels. We've got them on a DIY ground mount system. These right here are all of our solar panels. We're currently running about 3000 watts of solar panels. And I will show you really quick the DIY mount system using Unistrut. We've got a whole video showing you exactly how we made these mounts. They've been working great. They've been up for two winters now. They hold the snow. Actually, the snow slides right off of the panels, but they hold it just fine. Oh, and you're probably wondering, why is our shed up here on this trailer? If you're a normal viewer of our channel, you know that we were moving the whole shed and we broke the tractor. Ah. So we're waiting for parts to come in so that we can get this shed off of the trailer and get it to where we want it set permanently. But in the meantime, let's take a look at our solar system. So from the solar panels, the power comes in through these wires. They come in right up through here into the two charge controllers. This is a 70 amp charge controller and this is a 50 amp charge controller. The power comes in right here and right here. This runs the bank of six solar panels and this runs the bank of four solar panels. So the power comes into here, it does its MPPT magic and then it runs up through these cables all the way up to here to the negative and the positive uh, distribution centers. So let's follow the negative first. It goes through this battery shunt right here which gets its power from right here and there's a data cable actually that's connected to there it goes in this hole and connects us right to here where we can then monitor our batteries. Right now we're at 82%. It's around 9.30 in the morning right now. So on here then we can look at a lot of different things here. We can see you know, how, what we're charging at right now. We are charging at uh, 1.6 kilowatts. Now that's how much is going into the batteries. That's not including what's going out to the house. So we're using probably a couple hundred watts in the house right now. So our solar panels are probably producing about 1.8 or so, but 1.6 is actually going into the batteries. So that's our battery monitor here, which gets its information from this negative battery shunt. All right, the positive side, it goes into here. And then from here, it goes up this wire, comes around, goes through the battery disconnect, goes up through a 250 amp fuse, and then over to the batteries. The negative basically does the same thing. It comes from here, goes over to here, over to the negative shunt. So we have our positive on this corner and our negative on that corner. We are running eight Battleborn batteries. They are wired in series. And then in parallel, this is 24 volts, 24 volts, 24 volts, 24 volts. So we have 400 amp hours at 24 volts. If they were wired in 12 volt, just in parallel, it would be 800 amp hours at 24 volts. One of the questions that we get asked a lot is what about balancing the cells? Each one of these batteries right here, all eight of them, each individual one has its own battery management system built in. Right, so you can't undercharge them, you can't over discharge them, you can't hook them up with cross polarity, you can't um, charge them when they're too cold or use them when they're too cold. I mean, they are like fully protected by the battery management system that is inside each one of these. Takes care of the balancing and everything for you. Okay, so we've got the power going into the batteries from the charge controllers. Where does it go from there? That's a good question. So we come out then of the positive and the negative here. They cruise over, go through that same fuse, right? It's all the same wire, comes into the distribution hub. And so from this distribution hub right here, then we've got a positive going to this one, a positive going to that one, negative going to that one, and a negative going to this inverter. That's how the inverters get their power from the batteries. Now, inside of here, let me open these up and we'll take a look inside real quick. Everything is grounded like this right here. They're all grounded, they go through here, and they're all grounded, they come down through here, down the hole, they go to a ground rod. One of the things that I had a really hard time finding when I was trying to hook these up in split phase was actually where you connect the wires 
for the split phase to make it actually work. This is your data cable, right? It goes into this one, it runs over here, and it runs into this one right here. It won't work if you hook it up any other way. It's, it's got to go into the far left one on this one and the far left one on this one, and then they can communicate. And I'll show you actually how we program that. Let me do that right now. If you want to hook it up to your computer with USB, you're going to need this interface right here. But you could also get a Bluetooth dongle that you hook up to the uh, inverter. These guys right here are already set up with Bluetooth. They come that way from the factory. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the Victron app from your app store and open it. You'll see a list of all of your devices here. Choose Multi Plus which will open up the wizard since this is the first time that you're using the app after you have daisy chained them together with the data cable. All you need to do is follow the setup wizard, answer all of their questions, and then you'll have the opportunity to put in all of your settings for each of these devices. You're gonna need to get the settings from the manufacturer of your batteries, so we're just gonna go ahead and zoom through this, but if you're interested in the details, you can go ahead and pause it or play it back in slow motion. All right, so now that we've got them all set up and they're actually working properly. So these three right here, this is your voltage out. And this one right here is your voltage out. So this is line two, this is line one on a 240 volt split phase system. It comes down out of here, goes into here, goes into this hole right here. This one comes out, goes into that hole, and it comes down into this box where there is a 20 amp circuit breaker for each one of the legs. In here, it's converted to 10-3 wire. 10-3 wires coming along here, comes right down to here. This is a 240 volt, uh, 30 amp outlet. We actually use that outlet to run the well pump, which I will show you later the stuff that we can power with this and how you can monitor it and all that kind of good stuff. From here, it comes down in 10-3 and comes into this outlet. This is line one, this is line two. That way we can run the house, which is just run off of extension cords temporarily. You see here, extension cords running the house. Well, that's because we're still under construction. And so line two runs the house, line one runs all of our construction tools so that we can build the house. All right, so that's how the power gets out to where we want to use it. Now, we can also charge these batteries off of our generator. And what's awesome is because this has two inverters and it's split phase, we can actually charge it doubly fast. This one here will charge at 70 amps, 24 volts. And this one will charge at 70 amps, 24 volts. So we're charging at right around 4,000 watts off of the generator to charge these batteries in the middle of winter when we don't have any sun and our batteries are getting low. But how does that work? Well, this is our power in right here. Power comes in through this cable right here. This is 10-2. Up in this inverter, power comes in. This is 10-2, it comes down here. Both of those wires together, 10-2. Two. two of them come into this box right here where they are combined together and connect to this big 10-4 plug, which plugs into the generator. We'll start up the generator. I'll show you how we charge it from there. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we just take our plug in. You notice there was no change in sound on the generator. There's a bit of a delay and it kind of ramps up. There we go, hear that click? Now we're ramping up our charging. There we go. All right, so right now the generator is giving us about as much as it can, right around 4,000 watts. It's coming out of the generator and going into the batteries right now. We have 1,400 watts on our panels. Bouncing around a little bit right here, right? So we got 4,000 watts coming in from the generator. Perfect, that's exactly what we want, man. It's a lot of power coming in. I'm gonna shut that off, it's noisy. All right, so not only where we're charging the batteries, but these two guys right here also have a transfer switch. And so it was transferring the power from the generator to the house. So we weren't using any battery power to power the house while we're running the generator. It goes straight to the house from the generator and charges the batteries at the same time. 
that's pretty cool. Another question that we've gotten frequently is why are our battery cables so large? And that is because you need to size them for the amount of amps you're gonna be drawing off of it. Look at a chart that shows you how many amps for what size wire, and then you can figure that out. But it's so that you don't have a voltage drop over the length of your wire. If you want a detailed list to all of the parts that we use for our off-grid system and a wiring diagram, there's a link down in the description below. All right, so let's check out our biggest load, which is this guy right here, our 220 well pump. So look at this right here. Right now we're putting in 1500 watts. Still early in the morning, right? So, I mean, look at the shadows. We're not generating the full amount of power off of our panels right now because it's still so early in the morning. The sun is coming in at a very steep angle sideways to the panels. Later on, we'll be up around two to 3000 watts of power coming in in full sun, but Let's check it out. We're going to run our well pump. All right, let's see what we're using. Now you notice we're taking 260, 80, eh, almost 300 watts out of our batteries. So we're using the 1400 watts coming from the panels, plus we're using an additional 200 watts out of the batteries to run that well pump right now. In the middle of the day, we'll have plenty of extra power to charge the batteries and run the well pump, no problem. Go ahead and disconnect the well pump. So these guys can generate a lot of power. 6,000 watts at 240 volts, right? 3,000 on this leg, 3,000 on that leg. But what's really cool about these inverters, you can like stack them. So we could add another inverter here and another inverter right here. Then we would have 6,000 watts on this line and 6,000 watts on this line. We could then add another one, have 9,000 watts on this side and 9,000 watts on this side, add another one over here, three inverters on each side. So what's really cool about that is you can start off on a smaller budget with a smaller system. And then as your needs increase, you can add to it without like being worried about whether or not your new components are gonna be compatible with your old components. These guys are made to stack. You just, j just daisy chain them together with the data cables. Another question that we often get is, you know, what do we actually run off of this system? Well, let me show you. This right here is the power that's running the house. This comes off of uh, line two. So we follow that cable, that extension cord over here. I know guys, this is like not the way you're supposed to do it, but this is the way we're doing it because we're like in process of building. Right, it comes into here, goes into this little distribution thing right here. We've got one, two, three extension cords plugged into that, which go into the crawl space and go into the house to run some, some critical stuff. Okay, so let's cruise in there. See, I mean, we're under construction, guys, right? All right, so let's come in here and let's see, what are we running in here? Well, we're running a heat lamp for the chickens. We run that heat lamp 24 hours a day. While the chickens are small, no problem. We also run the washing machine. We can run the microwave, deep freezer right here, food dehydrator when we want to. So our power comes in to the crawl space right here. One of them runs over here to our pressure pump. This is not our well pump. It's just a pressure pump. It takes the water from our 2,500 gallon tank and pressurizes it for the house. We cruise down here. We got Seth's light in here. Seth can run his computers and things like that. We've got a little bit of wiring done in the house, which actually runs the bathroom, light and fan. All right, cruise over here to the kitchen. We run our refrigerator. This is just a standard high efficiency energy star frigidaire refrigerator. We run that off of it. Our propane stove, that's all propane off grid. It doesn't take any electricity. All right, and then we run all of these lights whenever we need to. And we come upstairs here real quick, guys. I'll show you what else we run up here. Turn on this light, we got that light. We've got a window AC unit that we can run. And then over here, we've got the TV and the gaming stuff here as well. So those are some of the things that we run. Of course, you already saw the well pump running. Um, if you wanna see our whole like off-grid water system. We've got videos on that as well. I showed you earlier that we can monitor our batteries and stuff from right here. But also with this data port right here, we can connect it up to our computer. We can program all of this stuff and set it all up. And I showed you kind of a little bit of that earlier, 
but just let me show you what we can monitor with the data cable. You could also get a Bluetooth dongle that you hook up to the uh, inverter. These guys right here are already set up with Bluetooth. They come that way from the factory. But when you come over to your computer, right, you see that we can we can check and monitor and program all of these things right here. All right, so let's look right here at our monitor. So as we can see, our batteries are at 88%. You've got all this information over here. It says our runtime is infinite with the amount of power that we're actually making. You've got power coming into the, into the batteries. Lots of information there. History you can look at. Trends you can look at. There are settings right here that you can go through and set up your battery capacity and all that kind of stuff right in there. Okay, let's go back and let's look at the small one here. So off of the small one, we can see we're producing 600 and mm, three, four, five watts right now. You've got all this information over here. You can see the trends again and your settings right here where you can actually go in and set up your battery voltage, maximum charging current, right? Your float, absorption and equalization stuff. For these settings right here, you need to make sure that you get the settings from the manufacturer of your batteries. That's good. So 600 watts off of the small one. How much are we getting off of the big one? Ooh, we're getting 1100, almost 1200 watts right now off of the big one. We've got all the same information over here. It tells you what state you're in. Right now we're in a bulk charging. Anyway, you can get into all your settings over here as well. And then we can look at our multi plus. And here we can see that line two is using 400 watts and line one, well, it's not really using anything. It's using zero watts right now because there's nothing actually coming off of line one. Let's go ahead, we'll plug in our well pump again here so we can see the change. And now we can see here we're using 761 watts off of line one and 1234 watts off of line two. So if we come over here, we can go to settings and then we can change the settings of all of these, right? General, these are, the, these are the settings that we set up when we set these two guys up for split phase, right? Those are all those settings in there. And you might be thinking, and that's kind of a pain, you have to plug your computer in to actually work all this stuff. You don't. You can use your phone and a Bluetooth app and you can control and do everything that I just did on the computer right on your phone from the comfort of inside your house. If you want a detailed parts list plus a wiring diagram of our system, there's a link down in the description below where you can check it out.